Welcome to From Betrayal to Breakthrough. I'm Dr. Debbie Silber, and today's guest is Erica Laszlo, transformational teacher, coach, author, communication trainer, and creator of Superconscious Self Coaching, the number one intuitive, unique, licensed coaching system of all time. Erica Laszlo has transformed many thousands of lives from 25 countries and five continents. She has saved marriages from breaking apart, businesses from bankruptcy, and gave a new perspective and a fresh start to those with severe health or money issues. Superconscious Health Coaching and all of the other courses offered by the International Network of Superconscious World has been created by Erica and are based on her 25-year experience in communication, spiritual development, coaching, and teaching background. Before founding Superconscious World with her husband, who has been a CEO of different multi- national companies. She has been a financial director of a private school and then a vice president of a spiritual organization in the U.S. She and her husband are the proud parents of their grown-up son who lives in Germany. You're about to meet a very interesting woman. Erica Laszlo has a unique method to help us heal and forgive. What makes her process even more powerful is that she's using her intuitive ability to see the stories of a person's past so that they can understand why they may be experiencing something. She did it with me and it was really interesting. Get ready, here's Erica. Oh, everybody, you are in for such a treat today. I have Erica Laszlo with us, and she's going to be talking about forgiving your hurt in two steps with the Demert method. And the whole idea of forgiving hurt in two steps sounds really, really nice. So welcome, Erica. Welcome, everybody. And thank you, Debbie, for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. So you know, when it comes to betrayal, there is so much hurt. And the idea is, of course, we want to heal it so we can move forward. And there are times where it just seems absolutely impossible. And and I know you have a betrayal experience. Do you remember your experience and how you moved through the hurt of your own experience? Well, at that time, I was quite young, I, I suppose. I, at, it was at the age of 18 when I realized that my Dad's secretary only showed love, which was not a real love, to me because she was the secretary of my dad. And after my dad was not a boss anymore, she basically cut all ties to me. She didn't respond to my telephone at that time and things like that. So she she just didn't want to meet. She didn't want to know me anymore. And this was really a very big thing, you know, especially that I was very young and I haven't ever before experienced such a thing like this. You know, I I really didn't understand. I I asked my parents about it, that what's going on, why she didn't want to talk to me. And they said that, well, we knew this, that she, she just showed the love to you because dad was the boss. And I said, oh my goodness, how can anyone be like that? You know, I just didn't understand and it didn't make any sense to me. And especially not that she did it for, she has been doing it for 18 years. Oh my goodness, how anyone can can be like that just because of of my, my dad was her boss. Mm. It, it didn't make any sense to me. Were you close with her? What kind of relationship oh, yeah. did you have? Okay. Oh, yes, absolutely very close. I, I called her like like my second mom. I liked my, I loved my mom very deeply, but but she was very close to me. So mm. I, I went to her. I even slept in her in her um, apartment. So like in a second mom or a second grandma, she was older than my mother. So it was very, very, very disappointing. I I really can't even, you know, explain how it was, especially, as I said, it was very, at a very young age, you know. Mm. And, you know, this reminds me of 
when, let's say, um, a couple gets divorced and, and maybe there were children that came into the relationship and then there's the divorce and what happens with those kids, right? It, it, yes. It, it, it's just their sort of, is the, the ex, the one who wasn't the mother or the father, I guess that role changed and there, there's a lot of confusion and, and pain around that. And that's something that I've definitely heard. And of course, you probably... Yeah, I should say, of course. Did you take it personally? And did you, how did yeah, you? Of course. Yeah. How, 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 can, how can you not? Especially yeah. at the age of 18. Because I, I didn't know a lot of things at that time. You know, we are talking about the, the early, early 80s. So I, I really didn't have the knowledge what I have at the moment. And it was very disappointing, very sudden, very from one day to the other something which I was not prepared for. Mm. And that's, that is the shock of betrayal. It just, we feel blindsided. We feel like the, yes. just the rug has been pulled out from under us and who we thought we knew they're not, they're not that yeah. person. And it, it is, exactly. it's a shock because in your experience, it was 18 years thinking you knew someone. Absolutely. And then they, they showed you that they were someone very different. So what did you do? Well, I think love helped me out from it, you know. At the age of 18, I was also very lucky because I found my love partner for my whole life. We are still together, so we are married. At that time, of course, I didn't know that he will be my whole life partner. But it turned out that, yes, he is. And and probably this other love helped me out from the betrayal. So definitely love healed the loss of love. Mm, so love, love definitely heals. We, we know that. Yes. So did it happen again? Were you, did you experience any other betrayals after that? Yes, I did. With partners, business partners. And it's quite interesting that basically what I can say that all, almost always were women and not men. So I know that women usually complain about men. I, I really cannot. I mean, yes, of course, you know, in such a long marriage, what we have, we are together now for, we have been together for 35, 35 years mm. this year. Congratulations. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So of course, in a marriage, as long as this one, you basically experience everything, even betrayal. But although it was very difficult at that time, for me, somehow it seems, or maybe I just forgot how difficult that time was, that the time when women betrayed me were always more difficult or, or even what I can say is ununderstandable. When a man does this, I understand that, you know, because there are so many other women outside. So that's quite, quite a challenge for all, all men. And I know this. However, when a, a partner, a woman does this, then it's totally ununderstandable for me. So I just want to make sure I understand, because I'm sure there are a lot of people listening saying, are you excusing men from from? betraying is that okay and somehow that's okay and it's not okay for a woman to do it i just want to make sure we're we're clear i don't say if it's okay or not okay but i i can i can understand it better personally i can understand it mm -hmm. better mm -hmm. i don't say it's an excuse or or yeah i don't say it's an excuse whether somebody is a man or a woman mm -hmm. however biological men are Yes, really, they are wired, you know, biologically, historically, socially, whatever way, you know, they are wired to, to just have a lot of children. And, and this is, this is their, their way, how they function in their head, actually, and, and by their instincts. So if they are not very aware of the, what they are doing, then, of course, they are going by their instincts. And it's, it's really different what, what usually women do. But of course, it's not an excuse for, for men. Mm. I don't say that. But I can understand it. What is difficult for me when you are together in a business with someone and 
and when it doesn't work out and when you feel betrayed. So g- can you give us an example of of l- one of these betrayals from someone that you, a woman that you did, you believed in, you you felt like you were in a, a, a partnership with in business and then something changed? Well, yeah, quite difficult without saying something about the business. So we were together and then it turned out that one of the ladies, um, who I thought that we are in the same business, told to another person who organized some business for me that don't do this because I would like to have those businesses as a, as a, as a special person without having me in, in it, in, in this business. And this is the sort of betrayal I meant. Mm. Whether it made made some sense or not, I don't know. Well, it, it it makes sense if it was something that you were counting on and you believed in that person, and then yes. they, you know, b- without your I awareness or consent, just changed their mind yes. and and yes. thought of themselves above you. So, how did you heal from that, and what came of that? Well, at that time, it was very easy for me because I already had the demurt method, how I call this method. It came to me several years ago. The first part, actually. The second part came last year. So it's quite new in a sense. So I think it was in 2005 when I was preparing for a communication training, what I was teaching. And when when I got up in the morning, I just got the idea that, oh, this is the way how we can forgive. Because of course, if you don't, forgive to the person, it's very difficult to have a clear communication because the anger will be always there. And it it basically stops you using clear communication. It will be always blaming and things like that. And it eats us up alive. So can you share the method? Can you talk about it a little bit? Oh, yes. It's it's so easy, actually. And that's why I love it. You know, anything what I I come up with, it's very easy. (laughs) So the method itself for forgiving is two steps. First step is you need to be very specific about what you want to forgive. So you cannot forgive generally like I forgive my mom what she has done to me. It doesn't make sense because she she didn't do everything. <laughs> she did specific things what I cannot forgive, for example. So uh, for, so just as an example, it has to be very specific. Does And let's just take something really small. Like let's say someone cut you off in traffic. Can it be, I forgive that person who cut me off in traffic? Like you're being very, yeah, okay, so specific, very specific. Very specific. So for okay. example, I forgive John. Sorry, John's, sorry, John's. I, I know this name very well <laughs> from English. So very, very <laughs> sorry about any John. <laughs> but anyhow, so forgive anyone don't name name people. Forgive anyone who hurt me badly. Mm-hmm. This is the specific sentence. Uh, and of course, you know the hurt exactly. So you can even be more detailed. And then you write this sentence down. I forgive him or her this and this. Mm-hmm. And you continue writing. But I don't, or how I call it, or, I, or how usually I do it, but no, I don't forgive because. And then you write everything else, what comes up from you. Because why we cannot forgive, it's because we have a lot of, lot of resistances against forgiving. And these resistances are on different layers in our body or in our system, whatever we call it, doesn't matter. So basically with this method, with this demurred method, we dig out all the resistances from all levels. And it goes like this. There is the sentence, the specific sentence you want to forgive. I forgive him or her that she did or he did this to me, but no, because... I cannot do that. But no, because she or he doesn't deserve it. 
but no, because I don't want to forgive, but no, because I hate him or her, but no, because da, 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 okay? So basically you go until you can write anything out. And after a time, of course, we will feel that there is no more. I just don't have anything popping into my head. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the part when I say that that's the second step. The second step is you use the same sentence, the same specific forgiving sentence. I forgive him or her that she did this or that because... And then if I can write anything after because, it means that I can really affirm the forgiving sentence. And if I have any idea in my mind why it was sort of okay to forgive, not okay to do that, it's a big difference, Mm -hmm. but okay to forgive, then, then we are done with that forgiving situation. And of course, as we are humans and anger is very tricky, it can happen that after two or three days or after a week or maybe after a month, I again feel angry about that person. So then I write again the specific sentence, which maybe is a bit different than the previous one, or even it's the same. And then I write the same thing again. And I do it until... Again, I don't have anything more coming and I do the because or affirming the forgiveness. Why most people don't forgive is because they think, and this is my experience with people in my consultation work, that they think that if they forgive, it means that they basically agree with what Mm -hmm. has happened. Mm -hmm. And they don't, don't agree, of course, they don't, and we don't want to agree. And the other thing why they don't do that, because if they think that with that, they, they basically would uh, make the other person free from this situation. Mm-hmm. However, forgiving is not, not about that. It's about freeing ourselves up from the heaviness of the anger, because the anger is in us and not in the other person. So how I call it usually that, that we are carrying the angers as rotten potatoes. Mm. They are very stinky. And we are basically putting it down. And, and if we forgive, we don't need to carry that heaviness with us. Mm. So and, to, sum, to sum up what you, what you said about the process, we're, we're being very specific about what we're forgiving. And, yes. then, and then we're bringing up all of the resistance that we could possibly have around it until there's no more resistance. And then we're saying that we're forgiving because, and that's where we're supposed to be feeling the, the release and like we're putting down the rotten potatoes. Is that okay? All right. So, so I, and that I can definitely see that being an incredibly healing process, but I can also see when we're triggered again by uh, some sort of reminder of what the betrayal created or what we've felt or what we've experienced. I could see the need to do it again. But Erica, you also have a very interesting um, gift that you use to help people through this process. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think it's something that really sort of amps up your whole process. (laughs) Well, I, I do. Well, maybe that's why I, I got this, you know, because this is how I got it, that I just got up in the morning and I, I had it immediately. So I, I didn't create it. I, it was just there in my head. At that time, I, I most probably, I didn't even know that it, How did it come to me? However, after my mom died very suddenly from one minute to the other, and she didn't have any problems, so she was young, only 64 years old, without any problems, so she was healthy. But she died from one minute to the other. And since then, I do have this sort of very strange whatever, I don't know how to call it, (laughs) that 
that I can see energies, feelings, situations, even in the past of my clients. Not all the time. I don't say it every time everything is in my head because it's not true. But if I concentrate on somebody, I can, I can see, because I'm very visual, I can see these situations, things, as I said, even if it happened in the past, of my client's past, which sometimes is a help for them to understand why something is going on in their life. However, what I really think is very, very important is that everything what happened in the past is, is in us. So basically the past is the present. If we cannot heal it, if we cannot forgive it, if we, if we cannot understand it, because although we don't know what's happened in the very past, in our ancestors' life, new science and new research proves that even trauma can be in, sort of inherited mm -hmm, mm -hmm. through genes. And, and it means that it's in the, in the present. It's not the past anymore, it's the present. And of course, this present will then determine our future. Mm. So the things that you see then... Um, so of course it's funny because w this is an audio recording, but you're looking right at me because we're doing this on <laughs> Zoom and I'm, of course I'm wondering what you see, but this <laughs> is, would this be things that you see just in my recent past? Would this be things that, from my ancestors? Like for example, what kind of things do yeah, you, it can do be you see? Very recent past. Ancestors, anything. I, I do believe in past lives, but not everybody has to believe in that. I do believe in past lives. But if somebody doesn't believe in past lives, I will always say that, okay, but you had ancestors. Do you believe that? You don't even need to believe it because everybody knows that we had grandmas and, and great grandmas and so on and so on. So whatever is there, I can see it as a past happening. And then, you know, it depends on the person. They believe it's their past life or they believe it's their, their life through that's coming through from the family tree through the generations. Mm. So what would be the benefit for the person you're working with to, to know what you've seen? Is that to, to just help them feel supported that whatever happened with them, they're not alone? What, what's the benefit of that? The benefit, I think it's, it's the understanding that if we understand, and again, it's proven by, by science mm -hmm. that until we don't understand something, the brain works like a crazy Google machine in, in, in our head and looking for the answer. Why, 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 why did it happen to me? Why did it happen? Basically, it, it wouldn't matter why, because mm -hmm. it doesn't help to know. However, it helps to calm the brain to calm the neural pathways and the neurons, not running all the way around looking for the answers. However, we, we free the energy up just by knowing, giving the answer why. Okay, now you know why, and now we can concentrate on what to do now. Mm. So for the benefit of, of everybody listening, is there something that, that you, as you're looking at me, now this is scary, but as you're looking at me, is there something that, that you see that could be, because I, I the only intention of this, and, and we spoke before we started recording is to help everybody who listens, help them heal physically, mentally, mm -hmm. emotionally, psychologically, spiritually from betrayal. So, um, you're, you're looking at me, is there something that would help others hear from you through you looking at me. Well, actually, I I just I don't don't just look people and then see whatever they had in the past. That would mm -hmm. be very tricky or very <laughs> very much or even too much for me. However, what I can see is if and we know because you also mentioned that you had betrayal in your life. Mm -hmm. I think basically everybody had because everybody has some issues with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Then let's see what has happened, why you had it, 
And whether it comes from your family tree, mm-hmm. I do have a beautiful chart in my system for that. My system is called Superconscious Self Coaching, and it's a very unique, intuitive coaching system with, in which we use charts, colorful charts. And we also have a family tree chart where I can see if the betrayal comes from the family tree to you. And maybe then I will see something, what has happened there, mm-hmm. or we will understand why you, you get, got this. Okay, so for me, it shows that it comes. So definitely there is something in the, in the family tree for you, which is connected to your present or this life betrayal from the maternal side and from the sixth level. On the sixth level, we have 32 great, 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 great grandparents. So it's not only the women there, but everybody who is there on that, on that level, on your mother's side. And let's see, again, using my charts, what are those energies that basically triggered or are connected with the betrayal. And that's why somehow it appeared in your life again, definitely for healing purposes. So it just triggers because we want to heal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so there are fear-based feelings connected to that. And the fear-based feelings are overwhelmed, angry, anxious, bitter, Worried, weak and powerless, threatened, blaming self and others, controlled, deceived, disappointed, painful, sick at heart, pessimistic, doubtful, hateful, and shocked. And basically, as I have seen now the the words, what came to me is that somebody on that on that level was um, coerced, was coerced to marry somebody, and she she didn't want to do that, and she was very very disappointed and betrayed by by the family that they they basically sold her Mm -hmm. because of having a good marriage and the whole betrayal thing started there and most probably it affected all the levels on your mother's side with the with the relationship with man because it it has the original root with a man that mm-hmm. I have to marry somebody because of the money. They sort of so- sold me mm. just to have the money and, and I feel betrayed and, and I don't want to do that. So this is so interesting and I hope all the listeners are hearing this. this so what Erica is sharing is that a family betrayal from, I mean, how many yeah. years ago was this? Oh yeah. my gosh, is just playing itself out throughout my experience now and, and for the, for the purpose of healing. So is it the kind of thing that now that I've experienced my betrayal and here I am doing the work to help others heal, if I do the work to heal, is it over? Does that mean like it won't continue to the next generations? Like, can it? I'm quite sure. I'm quite sure. Yes. However, this is what I always do because not everybody is doing such a beautiful work like you do, Debbie. (laughs) (laughs) So if the client comes and they don't do such a work, what can they do? So they, for them, I, I, of course, I offer the demerit method, what I already shared. And with the system, we also transform the energies. Basically, we we don't transform it. The, The energy transforms by itself. It's, it's proven by quantum physics. As we focus on something, that something has to change its behavior. So basically the energy transforms by itself. However, we can know it how to or, or 
what to transform, how, how to transform or what did it transform into. So the energies and feelings, what I already mentioned, transformed into love-based feelings for you and mm-hmm. also in the whole family generations. Mm-hmm. And now it says relieved, supported, reassured, safe and protected, like, for example, from another betrayal, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. accepted, which also means that not only I am accepted, Mm -hmm. but the energy of the acceptance is in me, which means that I can accept the other people who are in my situation. I can accept the situation. I can accept myself. And acceptance is a very, very important feeling and energy because this is the way how we attract other things into my our life mm-hmm. and the other thing that came up is blessed so there is definitely a blessing on it mm-hmm. optimistic filled with love and free free from all the stuff that has been done you know yeah oh that's so wonderful so just for the to to sum this up it seems that uh, my betrayal served a very great, wonderful purpose because it stops here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hear that betrayal? <laughs> it stops yeah. here. Yeah. And it, it, and whatever yeah. was in the family lineage or whatever that would have kept this going, uh, somehow I raised my hand and said, "Okay, let's let's have it, and then let's be done with it." So that is just so hopeful, Erica, because betrayal hurts so much. So to think that there can be an an end to it and. Uh, and and just a brighter future because of that through awareness through your work is just so hopeful. So I I really hope everybody listening realizes there's a way out of this. I mean, sure, you don't have to do what I did and create a whole new career and passion and purpose and everything and life, <laughs> but certainly you can break the lineage. So, Erica, how do we? Where do we find you? How do we learn more about you and your work? Well, I do have my own personal website and we also have a community website for superconscious self-coaching. We call it Superconscious World. So it can be found on the internet, scc.world, or somebody can find me at my own website, which is lasloerica.hu or, or .com. I'm Hungarian, so that, that's... <laughs> That's why you can hear my my <laughs> funny accent. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, it's wonderful. Okay, Erica, this was so enlightening. I want to thank you so much for your time. I'm sure everybody listening who is wondering why the heck they experienced their betrayal, uh, maybe maybe they needed to be um, the one who, who just ends it where it stops. It stops in the family. It just doesn't keep going. So thank you so much for shedding a light on that. And we really appreciate you and your work. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share this, because this is also my mission and and vision to have really better life for others, not only for me, because I did it. I know it can be done. And, And it's so much easier and lighter without the anger and with the forgiveness, what I can always do. And it is, it is really a hope, you know, for everybody. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you again. Wasn't that so interesting? It's crazy to think that something like betrayal is passed on from one generation to the next, like a certain quality or facial feature. And when it shows up, it's because it's meant to heal. And as Erica said, that's why it showed up for me. And if it stops here and doesn't continue to further generations, well, that's just great. Stay in touch with Erica by visiting her at scc.world slash en, and we'll have her links at pbtinstitute.com forward slash podcast. Here's my biggest takeaway. Once again, awareness is the key to changing something. Who knows if there's some legacy you're lugging around that's creating challenges for you now. If so, it's time to break free from those ties so you're free to create the fulfilling, healthy, and happy life you deserve. So let's start with a gift. And here's one from me. Head over to pbtinstitute.com to receive my gift of how your biggest crisis reveals your greatest gift. And let us support you. Go to Facebook and join our group, Women Hacking Betrayal, where we give information, tools, and support to help you move forward and heal once and for all. Can't wait to be with you next time. And here's to your breakthrough. Breakthrough.